happy sunday welcome to another episode of our show uh, today we are discussing about uh, the various parenting styles that are there in our today's society so before we begin the conversation let me give our panelists a chance to say hi to you hi viewers my name is victor and welcome to the show i'm pastor esther you're so welcome hello i'm pastor kago you're so welcome this conversation let me start by asking you Victor what is parenting and what are some of the parenting styles that are there okay we can say parenting is a process of uh, promoting supporting the physical the intellectual and the social uh, aspects of a child from infancy to adulthood uh, this goes beyond barely in the relationship of uh, just being a parent you're just a parent because you you birth those kids so parenting goes ahead of that by getting involved uh, in your kids life and uh, some of the parenting styles we find uh, majorly there are four we have the authoritarian we also have the permissive we have the authoritative and also the uninvolved parent yeah so tell us a glimpse reverend tell us a glimpse of the authoritarian parenting style um, when we are talking on parenting styles you're talking of the method and the approach that you use to bring up the child uh, you see every home has the the emotional climate that is in that home and it really affect the upbringing of the children and as Victor has said uh, there are, there are four major styles of parenting. And as you have asked of the authoritarian parenting style or the authoritarian parent, this is uh, a parent who is so controlling and um, is a parent who always give rules to the children. And the children are never given uh, an opportunity to give their opinion or to ask why are you telling me to do what you are telling me to do? So once an authoritarian parent give a command, the child is just to respond in obedience. So they, they are looking for obedience in, the, in that particular child. And so because many times they are oriented to, to really punishing the child more than disciplining the child. So the child is threatened sometime and because he has been used to this kind of threatening so he always obey actually and do what he is told to do because his opinion is not actually welcomed and so you see this kind of children what they will do they will have a bright obedience they'll just obey even if they you know they really don't know why they are yeah. doing what they are doing they do it because dad said it should be done and you should not ask why it should be done it has to be done that way Mm, you see, one of the more common uh, other parenting styles is the permissive parent. Uh, tell us about the permissive parent. Okay, when we talk about the permissive parent, these are parents who is not uh, much caring about the, how the way the child is, uh, mm. is behaving. Mm. Uh, this parent will always tell a child, for example, I don't want you to do this, mm. but uh, he will not follow up mm. on what the child is doing. Mm because uh, he, he, he is not more involved in the upbringing of the child mm. and uh, always he, is, he, is, he, he or she feels that the child, maybe he will or he or she will learn his own way mm. uh, and that is why he finds that he does not keep the, the rules that he set mm. and he allows the kid to have his way. He is not firm like in guiding the child mm. and uh, the child most of the time will always have his or her own way. I'd also like to add on what Pastor Kawa has said and say the parent is too soft. Yeah, for the and, permissive. Uh, yeah, the permissive parent is very soft mm -hmm. and is more of a friend than a parent. Yeah. You know, as a parent, there even the Bible instructs us there is, a, there is a place where you have to pick the stick mm -hmm. and discipline the child. Mm -hmm. But the permissive parents, they don't discipline their mm -hmm. children. And uh, because of creating that warm environment, 
uh, it creates a very fake environment where these kids are, to the extent where the parent does what the child wants. Mm -hmm. It is more of what the child wants and more what, of what he or she demands. Mm -hmm. And you find that these parents, what they tend to do is, uh, if for example, maybe, especially when it comes to finances, uh, there is no control. What the child wants or demanding, the parent provides. And because of that, they grow with that aspect of getting things very easily, very easily. And when they are faced by hardship, you find they are not able to cope in life. There's no resilience. And uh, because it was uh, like a false start, mm -hmm. you know, like now if you are running 100 meters and uh, the gun, uh, uh, before the gun goes, you find one of the other T has, mm -hmm. you know, it is called a false start. And that is just a race because they are able to repeat that race. Mm -hmm. But now in parenting, mm -hmm. if you start with a false start, it creates, it is going to create some complication as this person mm -hmm. grows up. So permissive par parenting, we can say it's too soft mm -hmm. and also it is more of what the child needs than what the parent wants to insist. And also, if I can add on that, these are parents that they don't give the consequences to the children of the actions mm. that they are taking, whereby they think that uh, because the child will, will, uh, will do, it's like what the, 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 this medari in Kiswahili that they say, mtoto wakiriria wembe mpatie, atajua ikimkata. You know, those are the kinds of the parent of which he or she is not guiding the child as the Bible mm. tells us when we are parents that we are supposed to guide the child mm. and mentor them in the way because when we talk about the parenting it's about that mentoring and mm. bringing up mm. the child. So you find this permissive parent is like he, he or she is not concerned about the consequences that will follow. The child will learn mm. in his way and uh, like Victor has said that he is not involved much in what the child is doing and the child will always have his own way. Mm. Yeah. So there is no direction in the permissive parenting. We can say that the, 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 the child is more of, the way you've said, he's, he or she is more of a friend. And sometimes you can say that the permissive parent also acts like as a parent because <laughs> the, parent, if the parent doesn't have the, the rules or doesn't have the say. And what about the uninvolved parent? Um, an involved parent is more of like the permissive parent, mm -hmm. but the uninvolved parent is worse <laughs> than the permissive, <laughs> the permissive <laughs> parent because this one is completely detached with the child. Mm -hmm. The child is left to himself, uh, to grow by himself. Nobody instructs that child. Mm -hmm. And so you realize the, the children that are brought up by uninvolved children uh, they tend to, to have uh, very difficult behavior problems in their lives mm. because there was no one to instruct them. Mm. There was no one to, to discipline them. Mm. And I see an excellent example of a man that was quite a, a success in the Bible, but he was a great failure mm. in his family, and this is King David. King David was always there going for war, and he was congaling and, uh, and he was having great victory over his enemies. But when he, when he came to home, David actually had no touch with his children. That is why when like Amnon left his stepsister, Tamar, um, you know, David does nothing. Yeah. And then, then Absalom come, kill Amnon, and David does nothing. Yeah. So you realize it was such an involved, an involved parent. And so you realize there, was, there were a lot of chaos. You know, he were, there was a lot of chaos in his family. You know, he was roosting his children. Mm. And you see even somebody like Absalom, at the end of the day, mm. he caused a level to his kinship because, because he was not there for them, even though he was getting a great success. And actually, as a parent, you can have a great success outside there. But at home, you're a great failure. And I tell you, uh, no, it can be so devastating mm. when you see, you know, the, the havoc that your children are, you know, that are bleeding at home because you are not there for them. So, so this, and this an involved parent, you know, at the end of the day, the children, you know, exhibit some characters that are, that are so wanting in our society because many times these are the children that sometimes also turn to drugs, you know, and also they, they tend to have a very poor social life because they have not seen it at home and they have not received it from their parents. 
And the last parenting style is authoritative. When uh, we talk about the uh, authoritative mm. style of parenting, mm. this is where the parent uh, is always considering the, the view of the child, mm. although he or she is firm, uh, on the direction that he or she is giving the child. Mm. And uh, the child is always mentored in a way whereby he, he, the, the child is shown this the way, and the parent always consider the view of the child. Mm. He wants to mentor the child. Mm. He will sit with the child and listen with the child and uh, show the child these are the consequences if you do this and help the child to grow in a way that uh, the child is able to make the choices. That is why you fight because the, the child has been given the opportunity to express his, uh, his will. Mm. He will be able to make the decision and the right decision mm. uh, because this parent is always firm in what he is saying. Uh, he is guiding the child, mm. but also he listens to what the child is saying. So I can add on what Pastor has said, and uh, the difference between authoritarian and authoritative is, you know, for authoritarian is by the script, mm -hmm. and no questions. Mm. But for, uh, and also setting limits without giving the child's responsibility of those limits. It's just because I said I'm the parent, that is it. But for the authoritative, he or she is considered that the, the child must be given the space to grow mm -hmm. and be a child. You know, it's, 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 it's very interesting in our society that uh, most parents do not allow their children to behave like children, such that even the time they cannot go to play with other kids, they are always in the house, and because of putting them in that environment, you find the social aspect and also uh, their growth emotionally is disturbed, especially when they are used to adult setups. But with the moment you, uh, the, the authoritative allow this child to, to explore, and to know he or herself and give her that room for building, especially the self-esteem, you find that the, the authoritative, we can say, is the best, uh, it's the best style of parenting. And also, uh, it, it focuses more on reinforcing discipline than punishment, you know, uh, compared to the authoritarian whereby punishment comes in and it, can come, it comes in especially when the, the rules are not followed. And after that punishment, you feel that child is very demoralized. But for the authoritative, it's more of reinforcing discipline and this child to be dependent and this child to grow knowing how to make decisions. And that's why you find that they're able to, uh, to produce children who are very high self-esteemed and highly disciplined. When you talk about the authoritarian parent, we find that uh, the, the communication is one way. The communication is from parent to child, and the child doesn't have a say in the communication. And we know that parents insist on being right, and also they don't think they make mistakes. So, Reverend, how should you advise a, a parent who sees himself as an authoritarian parent? Uh, should he change his parenting style? Okay, if you find yourself as an uh, authoritarian parent, you know, we are talking of style. So this is not something that is that it is you. Mm -hmm. It is something you can change because it's a style. Because you can know what is best and you pick what is best mm -hmm. and you drop what is not light. Mm -hmm. So if you realize you are a, an authoritarian parent, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things, you may seem as if you are, now, you know, you, you are prevailing over your children, but with time as, the, you know, when they are young, it may seem like that. Mm -hmm. But when they begin to grow up, and especially coming to teenage. At that time, these children will exhibit rebellion. They will be very hostile because they will reach a point and say, I think now I have to prove what dad or what mom has been saying is not true. Mm -hmm. And so they, they may turn up to rebellion. Mm -hmm. So if you are an authoritarian parent, I would say just pick a... a a different style, <laughs> like being, uh, you know, like being authoritative, where you are assertive, but you, you allow the children to make the decision for themselves. Because the more you, you know, you, you use the authoritarian style, these children, they will, they will get detached with you. Because they will be hearing you at the door and they will all be learning away. <laughs> so they will, you will never build relationship with your children. There will be no that board between you and your children. And so at some point, 
uh, I believe at some point if you continue that way, there is a, there's somewhere you completely disconnect with them. Mm -hmm. So I would advise such a parent. I think it is good to take a, uh, uh, another style mm -hmm. than using that one for the authoritarian because there's at one point you will lose your children. And also to add on that, it is possible to change like what Leverett has said. Because if you look like most of us, the way we were brought up by our parents, our, our parents were authoritarian, most of our parents. But now as we bring up our child, we find because of the exposure and access to the, the children, right? For example, in our academic system nowadays, where the children are, are being taught this is your right and all those things, mm -hmm. it, is pos uh, it is important for every parent now who is parenting at this age to adapt that uh, new way of parenting without being authoritarian mm -hmm. because the children now are more enlightened. Mm -hmm. There before when we were growing up, it was impossible for you to mm -hmm. question the, the parent, why are you telling uh, me to do that? Mm -hmm. But nowadays, if you tell your, uh, your four-year kid and mm -hmm. that mom don't do this, and then she will ask you, Kwanini, <laughs> you know, that is why it is important and it is possible, like what Leverett has said, that it is possible to change and adapt because we are also bringing up a different generation which is more enlightened, which is now being exposed to know their rights and all those things because of our, uh, the, 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 the generation that we are raising and also the system of our education. I can also add on the aspect and uh, support what Pastor Kago and Leva said, and especially in the area, in that area of fear. You know, uh, when you start painting a picture of fear as a father figure or as a mother figure in the house, where your children learn away instead of coming towards you, there are so many question marks. It means that those, those, student, uh, those children are going to see you as an enemy, and yet you are their parent. You know, and uh, that, emo uh, that fear is very destructive because it comes and as it, go it goes to the teenage, and is, as it proceeds that way, you find there will be a very big disconnect. And this is where you hear children even go to work in places when they're adults, and they don't miss home. They are comfortable, even not visiting their parents. They are very comfortable yeah. because of the fear that you have created. And you, you know, it's like you've turned your house to be an, uh, an army barrack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, whereby, you know, so just take orders and then they question later. And it is not very good. And uh, when children disconnect from their parents, you are going to feel the pain because uh, of that relationship. As we said that family is a relationship, but you have to change and really create that warm environment where kids can open to you, can open to you and you can have the two communication, not only one way. So that's, that's an area that uh, today's parents need to change and instill a warm environment in the house. And also maybe I would add, you know, home is the place that you should feel a lot of love. Mm -hmm. And any child brought up in a, a by, or by an authoritarian parent, mm. they don't feel that sense of love. Mm. They don't feel loved. Mm. Even when they, they are talking with the other children out there and they are talking about, you know, how, you know, how, how they relate with their fathers or how they relate with their mother, they, it's like they're in a strange world because that's something they do not experience at their homes. And at home is the first place where anybody need to experience love. But many places where children are brought up by an authoritarian parent, they do not sense love. And actually, they also do not know also how to love. Because they, it's something they never saw from home. So I would say to an authoritarian parent, let us, you know, let us not use that iron fist <laughs> to, lull, you know, to lull our children because they need to feel loved, they need to feel cared for, they feel to feel that nurturing from home so that we can bring up healthy children and, develop, and so that they can develop in a healthy way. Because if they don't sense that, that love, uh, it can be so devastating. Why do children of authoritarian parents tend to have low self-esteem uh, in their lives? Uh, the reason why most of the children who are brought up in a style whereby the parent is authoritarian mm -hmm. is, and they have low esteem is because that child view is never counted. The, the will, to, the ability to express yourself yeah. is one of the things that help a child mm -hmm. to have that good uh, self-esteem. So you find that in this setup where the child is being brought up and the parents are authoritarian, 
the child does not have a room. Mm. My word is final, like what mm -hmm. uh, Reverend has said. Mm. And uh, because my word is final, your view does not count. Mm. Uh, so you find that child, even when it, that child grows up and he, he becomes an adult, he will have a low self-esteem because I don't know if I speak, my, my, my view will be accepted mm -hmm. on the way I'm seeing this issue because it is start at home. We, we make children adults from the children mm -hmm. right at the family setup. Mm -hmm. So that child will grow with a setup because the child is uh, with a low self-esteem because the child is supposed to grow mm -hmm. Uh, from home, being nurtured to become a good adult mm. and a strong person who can be able to express his or her will. Mm. But if he has no environment in the home whereby we don't care what you say, you are a child, <laughs> and that is, oh, yeah. especially when they reach the teenager, uh, they, they will feel that, why am I not asked? Mm. It, is my, it is my school. Mm. It is my, my, my body. It is all those things. Mm. So when you, you stop them, and you don't give them an opportunity, that is where you find that that child will just leave, remain quiet, will be silent, and then every time he, will be th he or she will be thinking, if I say this, maybe it will not be right, because even my mom or my dad does not appreciate what I say. I can also say that uh, in return, it creates a lot of pain in that child. And you find uh, that because uh, you have, you have it, the communication is one way and uh, this child is not given the space to grow, if there is also a problem, then they become very vulnerable to decision making. They are not able to know what's the right decision. What should I do? Mm. And uh, sometimes they can settle for anything, feeling by the fact that uh, I've been unable to make the decision, not because he or she cannot make, but it's because, as Pastor has said, mm. the way they were brought up. The other thing that is very key, when the self-esteem is down, mm. that person lacks the worth and lacks the value. In fact, they reach a place where they reject even uh, uh, their parents and sometimes even you can feel they are bitter about life. Mm. And you know, the, 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 the thing about uh, parenting is very sensitive because the moment you are very bitter with the, with the person you have spent, let's say, a good, a good lifespan of your life with, mm. uh, being the, uh, the first person, the parent, that bitterness does not go easily. Mm. And you can live with it. And sometimes the consequences are severe, as we are saying. So it is very much important for the authoritarian parents to know that. Mm. It is good to create that one, the environment, and boost the self-esteem of the child because that's the, where they are most vulnerable mm. and also support their decision-making. You know, we, uh, another thing is that we live in a world that where people are busy. The father is busy and the mother is busy. So that's where most of the people who adapted their and involved parenting style. So should parents find time for their parents, for their children, instead of adopting such a parenting style? Uh, for the parent, we should always realize that uh, as there's another show here that we really talked on spending quality time with our children, that when we said, you know, and we will repeat again, you know, time is the best gift that we can give to our families. And it must be very intentional uh, for, because even if the parent says that you are going out there and looking for money and you are taking care of the, need, the basic needs of the children, in as much as they are eating and they are drinking and they are being clothed, we also need healthy people because you are only just taking care of their physical body. But you see, <laughs> man is not just a physical body. He has a spirit and he has a soul. And you see, in this, uh, you have to ensure that he is growing in all those, in all those areas. Mm. Spiritually, that they are growing. And in their soul level, they are as well growing even as their physical body. Mm. So we, we, as the palate, we have to create time mm. to be with our children. Because if we leave them, uh, they will adapt anything in life. Mm. Or somebody else will go teach them something else out mm. there. And uh, it will bring pain to our lives at some point in life. So I would say to an uninvolved parent, it is your responsibility mm. to take care of your children because if you allow the, your, your children just to, be, to grow by themselves or to raise themselves 
what will happen? They, they will promote their, self, you know, their selfish life, the selfish nature. You know, the nature will just mold them anyhow. But that is not the way God intended. It, God intended that we as the parent, that we take, our, we take care of our children, we mold them, we nurture them, we instruct them, we guide them, because you are the, you are the person that needs to guide your children. And you are the first teacher of your children. So let us just create time, be with them, nurture them, you know, and if you, are, you have taken that style of and involved, mm -hmm. uh, you have to change that style and realize that you need to be there for your children. You need to be there to instruct them and counsel them because they need you. And also yeah. even if I can add on what Lev has said, uh, when your children are young, they need you. That is a, is a two-way thing. But I've realized that, uh, especially we, for us who our ch parents are old, when the parents get old, they need their, their children. And the way the children will respond to you when you are old, it is because of the investment of the time that you made when they were young. Because if you are, for example, an involved parent, your kids will not have that board, even when you need them. Because there will come a time... You are, you, you don't have, for example, you don't have the time for your children. You are always busy on material thing and business, which is also good. But the, the, the issue is now the children, like whatever it has said, it, there is also the spiritual part of that child. Mm. So what happened is that as you are involved in the material things, the children that that connections with you. So even when they grow old and now you need them because now you are no longer working, you are no longer busy, you can't find them. And that's why it is important to, to invest more time with your children because at the end of the day, those children, you create a board because parenting never ends. Even when you grow old, you'll still be thinking about your children. So, mm. And if you don't invest time in them when they are young, when they grow old, they will always run away from you. And you, are, you want to have time with them, but they are not available because you didn't make that investment when they are kids. And also the uninvolved parent is uh, one of the dangers that Leverett has pointed, has pointed out has been swayed by the weed. Mm -hmm. And they tend to become victims of other people's actions and mm -hmm. consequences. Because they were not told there is a gap between just associating with anybody. Mm -hmm. Now because I do, don't have an example, I will set off all anything that is available. Mm -hmm. Because it was not, not demonst demonstrated. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, if it's peer pressure, they go. If it's drug abuse, they, they tend mm -hmm. to go easily. And also the aspect of uh, uh, the lack of uh, good behavior, even in public. Mm -hmm. And you find sometimes they say they don't care. There's nobody who asked me, mm -hmm. and there's nobody who has ever been involved in my life. Mm -hmm. And all, most of the time they are going to view themselves as victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we are saying is that uh, nowadays life is very complicated. It's not like uh, there before. The 21st century we have seen a lot of challenges. And... Uh, we are even hearing issues like teens' pregnancy and uh, drug abuse, even to an extent of people committing suicide. Mm. And it is because of these uh, styles like an, uh, uninvolved parenting, whereby you don't hear your child out. Mm. Even sometimes uh, uh, it is also well demonstrated that uninvolved parents go to the extent that even when kids have, uh, like now when the parents are visiting school for academics, and uh, maybe price givings, mm. you find that the parent is not there, mm. is not available. And that, that when it starts creating that picture, especially at the adolescent age, it is very dangerous. Because that, what it concludes is that this child now starts believing mm. there's nobody who cares in this world, and I belong to nobody, I'm not accountable to anybody, I've never seen anybody being involved in my life. Mm. And so that's why we are saying they're going to be swayed by any way. So uninvolved parenting, it's not a very good style, and I can say it's very dangerous. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You see, these children lack some level of mentorship. Mm. And mm. <laughs> you find maybe you are, you are in a family where your father is not there, your mother is not there. Mm. What should you do as a child in such a situation? Okay, okay. the child, it will depend the age of the child. Because <laughs> if the child is so young, he has nothing to do, mm. he will just receive what he is, get him from the parent. Mm. But uh, as he continue to grow in age and mature in age, uh, it will be very difficult for those parents to bring back the children 
to them, mm -hmm. as Pastor said, you know, at, uh, as he said, mm -hmm. because they already detached. Mm -hmm. But if a child maybe is an, in a teenager or like uh, or, um, mm -hmm. or uh, a young youth, I would advise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would advise him as the Bible. So, you know, you know God has taken a role in our lives, mm -hmm. that he is to be our father, and he has called us to be his sons and our daughters. Mm -hmm. So that person, if you are mature, you can turn to God, and God will, you will feel the warmth, you know, mm -hmm. you know, from God, mm -hmm. and especially when you come into the house of God and begin to relate well with the people, you can, you can really get that warmth from God's people, mm -hmm. from the servants of God, mm -hmm. and from God himself, because, uh, we wouldn't say because maybe you are brought up by an uninvolved parent mm. that that is the end of your life. Mm. It is not. Mm. It is, it is <laughs> not. <laughs> so turn to God. There is hope. But for those parents, mm. well, I would advise, let us take care of our children. Mm. Let us be there for them. Let us not just leave them there because it, it, it hurts them. Let us be there for them. So, and also, one of the things, like, the only child who can make a decision for him or herself uh, based on the parenting that he or she has received is a child, like, for example, a teenager. Uh, there is always a gap that can only be filled in every child that can only be filled by a parent. And if your parent is an involved uh, parent, for example, you're in secondary school, your parents are never available for your uh, visiting days or clinic, uh, academic clinic days, you can decide because you are a God-fearing child and you want. Don't fill gap with uh, that gap uh, by uh, by get, getting into mm. bad behavior. For example, like drug addiction and bad company. Mm. You can look up to godly people like mm. the pastors. You know, uh, uh, we I've seen of people that their parents were not that good in mentoring them. But when they came into Christ and they came into church, mm. they looked towards the leaders in the church, mm. people who can mentor them. And they can say, although he or she is not my, my biological father, mm. I am copying this parent. I'm copying this pastor. I'm copying this leader in the church. And maybe to add to that, Pastor said has reminded me of something, that, and especially to those that I understand about parenting. One time, my son was in uh, high school, in the high school, mm. and I realized uh, there, was a, I, I, there was a boy that the parent would never come. And so he came, I think he also, even he himself, he got touched of it. And told him, imagine the, the parent never turns up for this boy. So I told him, any time, whether it's the visiting or this, you know, after, if it is academic, when people come to it, I, I told him, you always be calling him, come eat with him all the time. And whatever I bring, mm. just just share it with him. Be, you know, because those who understand, if you, you really see such a child, be there for them. Be, just be there for them and fill that gap, as Pastor has said it, fill that gap so that that child, you know, will not turn to some other things out of the frustration that may come in life. And especially if you understand the, you know, the, you know, the importance of taking care of that child, you know, and protecting them and giving them support when actually they didn't need it. And especially when it's like a visiting and he is just there looking at the others when they are just eating and he's just out there alone. We can support them. Wow, what an amazing show it was on Parenting Styles. Hope you have learned something about the uninvolved and authoritarian Parenting Styles. Uh, don't forget to join us in our next show where we will discuss the permissive and the authoritative parenting styles. It will be a great show. Next time. See you next time. Thank you.